I'm sure everyone remembers the feature stop and swap in Banjo-Kazooie that was scrapped. For many reasons. If not, you've most likely been living under a rock. If you do remember, then I have an interesting tale for you. So I'm sure everyone knows of the supposed spots of which you can activate SNS. Well, while playing Banjo-Kazooie on my computer, hooked up via GameBridge, I was hunting down codes for my game chart when I found this website that had an all-black background. It had a short description and a code. The description was as follows. Have you ever wondered what's behind those doors in Grunties? Lab? Well, now you can finally find out with this code. What followed was a rather short two-line code with a simple description. I couldn't believe it, like really, I was entirely skeptical. Though something at the back of my mind wanted me to believe, so I rubbed my head inside and plugged in my game shark mounting Banjo-Kazooie on top. I was pretty into hacking games back in my youth, so entering the code didn't take me long. I enabled the code and went back to the boot menu of the GS and selected Start. As the N64 logo trotted onto the screen, I took this time to inspect the execution of it. It was rather simple for such an amazing code. Go to Grunty's lab and press the L button. I sat back and let the intro roll until I could skip it. I went to my third file, which was a 100% file that I did over a long weekend. Starting up in the entrance to Grunty's lair, I headed right up the slope into the first note door into the room with a platform with a witch's ugly mug on it. I went right up the second slope in this room, the one made out of the slimy stuff that covers the ground most everywhere in Bubble Loop Swamp. As I continued my ascent, I decided not to use warp cauldrons for one reason or another to drag out the suspense. I continued to climb the tower, humming along with a nostalgic music all the while being somewhat giddy with excitement. I was having thoughts. Like, I wonder what's behind the door? And such until I finally neared the home stretch of it all. As I ran through the final room, the one before jumping in Dimpot and being launched up to fight the evil witch. I completely ignored him though as I headed to the right for the otherwise useless lab area. I dispatched the black gruntling and then took a breath to calm myself and tapped the L button on my game pad. Instantly there was a difference, everything twisted to the side including the door, though it was silly to see Banjo do a dirt out moonwalk. I sighed and muttered, what a waste of time. I did notice though, that behind the door was an actual hallway that led into black like an actual door in the game. I shrugged and decided to leave my now whacked out parent bird. Duo to it. Banjo's animations were all cut in half and most made him seem like he had mental issues, for example his basic paw combo just made him flail his arms above his head. I approached the door and took a few test steps inside to see if I could actually walk on the floor. To my surprise I could. I continued down the dark hallway until suddenly Banjo fell. He fell for a good minute or so until I heard the death tune, followed by Grunty's laugh. What the hell? I said to myself, I was very confused. Whenever you use levitate to go out of bounds on the Banjo games and fall into the abyss, outside of the stage, it just makes the entry slash exit sound effect and puts you back at the last door. I didn't have much time to ponder further as the game began to freak out. It was making all kinds of beeps and digital screeches that could make your ears bleed. I reached for the power off switch when suddenly it played the entry sound and the game opened to Banjo in the same room. I say, Banjo, because of what he was, he was a limbo. Instead of his normal form. For those not in the know, a limbo is the skeleton enemy from the Mad Monster Mansion. He started out laying on the floor but he then just stood and rubbed his head as if he had just taken fall damage. It had taken me up till he did the standing animation to process that this skeleton was indeed Banjo. I moved him around and... He moved just like the bear, no glitches like if you had just model swapped him with anything else in the game. I barely had time to do anything when the text box came up, the icon was grunty. She gave off a dinky yet chilling rhyme, it seems that you've been a little too late, wait until you see your home meet fate. I blinked, my mind quickly putting together that I had to see Banjo's home, but before I could move more the words game over appeared and I was promptly booted out to the menu. By this time my mind was reeling as the normal intro played, nothing seemed out of place. It was when I got to the file select. 
It opened to the sleeping banjo like normal, an empty slot on my cart. I tried to go to my file but the controls seemed to be locked. I tried hitting every button, eventually I narrowed it down to A he didn't wake up, but the file opened anyway. The intro didn't play and Banjo walked out. He was normal again oddly enough. The music was slow and in lower pitch. Grunty decided to open her big mouth again. See? When you pursue such silly, unselfish tasks, the world you love will see its last. I read the sentence and immediately asked in a panicked tone, what the hell did you do? After a moment of deciding this was getting me nowhere I decided to take a look around and what I found was utterly shocking. Spiral Mountain was on the verge of an industrial revolution. Though really it was just objects from rusty bucket based rune about. It just made me feel very uneasy, seeing the chimney sticking out of the mountain and the steel textures everywhere, as if construction had just started. Though the most unsettling part was the TNT box from rusty bucket bay was hanging above part of Spiral Mountain. Due to their being so much the camera, the cane jerky and banjo moved very slowly. Throughout my exploration I could hear Grunty's awful laugh. Finally she decided to speak. It's the fool's game you choose and guess what? You lose. Right after she said that I got the game over text again as the camera moved to the TNT box. Sounds of an alarm started playing and the camera panned out to above the map and the TNT box dropped causing a massive explosion that spread across the entirety of Spiral Mountain. The screen then faded out as the trademark rare explosions kept sounding. I eventually decided to reset the game and as far as I'm concerned everything is back to normal. I've had time to process what happened, I think Rare wants us to move on. It's been 10 years since Stop and Swap was revealed and it was somewhat resolved on the Xbox editions. I mean they started on Stop and Swap too. That should be fun, right?